Hey everybody, welcome back to the Golden Bolt, and welcome to the final episode of this year's Shrektober. Which, I know, it's November now. The first video came out the first week of October. This is the first week of November. It spans out to about 30 days. If you've got a problem, fight me. And speaking of fighting, we're going to be playing Shrek Super Slam on the Nintendo GameCube. I'm good at these segues now, you see? Can I see? Super Slam takes place after the events of Shrek 2. The game opens up with Shrek and his friends taking turns telling the baby Dronkies some bedtime stories to put them to sleep. The game ends with the Dronkies asleep because of the said bedtime stories, although Shrek wakes them back up by yelling at the narrator and breaking the fourth wall. Sounds pretty boring, right? No, 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 no. The game's plot is anything but boring. Each mission contains some of the most over-the-top scenarios I've ever seen in a fighting game, and they're outright hilarious. I laughed way too much at this game. It doesn't take itself seriously at all, and that works so well in this case. It just tries to go out and have a good time, and it succeeds wonderfully at that. In fact, I'm not even going to say any more words for the rest of this part of the review. I'm just going to let the game speak for itself. Give me a shot of your best milk and a cookie chaser. Milk and cookies? You monster! <laughs> I want my money back for those karate lessons! Welcome to Fire Talk! And what can we fry you today? Kimi Shikes. Whoa, slow down, Pally! I speak five languages, but I don't know gibberish! Wanna take another whack at it? We're closed! Super Slam is a 3D fighting game in the same vein as Power Stone. If you're not familiar with Power Stone, Super Slam is sort of like a 3D Super Smash Bros. If you're not familiar with Smash Bros, what's wrong with you? The game takes place in contained, very interactive levels. There are weapons all over the place, items drop all the time like in Smash Bros, and there are usually several set pieces that players can take advantage of. Super Slam focuses its mechanics around the slam meter. As you rack up damage, the meter fills up until it maxes out, allowing your character to unleash a devastating slam move. With the exception of one item, slam moves are the only way to kill your opponents, and thus rack up points. This all sounds really familiar for some reason. As far as the actual combat goes, like Smash Bros, this is a two-button fighter. A is for your light attacks, B is for your strong attacks. There are also grabs with the X button, a double jump, a block with R that pops up a visible shield, and an evade roll. When the slam meter is full, the B button becomes your slam button. Because the only way to kill is with a slam attack, even if it's a 3 on 1 fight, the solo fighter still has a chance, and arguably may even have better odds. Many of the slam attacks are similar to one another, but pretty much all of them can wipe out all the opponents on screen in the right hands. It's not hard to have the right hands though. Once somebody gets a slam, it's pretty much over. Even if a player misses the first time, the slam meter stays full for up to 4 more attempts, and considering the slams cover a massive amount of ground space in this game's pretty tiny levels, it's nearly impossible to avoid a slam. The game essentially becomes a war of attrition a lot of the time. It doesn't help that the game more or less only has this one game mode. At least in Smash, if you don't like the regular gameplay, there's stamina mode and everybody's lord and savior, coin mode. At least in addition to the short half hour or so story mode, there's the mega challenge mode, which adds unique stipulations and scenarios. This is a really hefty mode that'll probably take an extra 10 hours to beat entirely, but even this wears thin for a reason I'll get into later. Also, there are three secret advertisement challenges for Tony's Pizza that involve... Pizza. Now since this is a fighting game, let's discuss the characters and stages for a bit. There are 20 playable characters and over a dozen stages in Super Slam, with many of each being locked behind that mega challenge map I mentioned earlier. There are the obvious Shrek mainstays like the Ogre himself, Donkey, both Human and Ogre Fiona, Puss in Boots, Jinji, and Pinocchio, as well as some more generic fairy tale characters like the Black Knight, Humpty Dumpty, Quasimodo, and a Unicorn. Each character is mostly unique with a couple of clones here and there. As for the stages, they're pretty varied and each feels slightly different when it comes to the actual battling, but I can't help but feel everything is a bit too samey after a while. I know that there's, oddly enough, a dedicated fighting game community for Super Slam, but to me the game's basic mechanics actually hurt its lasting power. With the slams being incredibly easy to hit, and with there being an incredibly limited moveset for each character, there's just not much replayability in this game for me. 
The first hour or so was incredibly fun, and part of that is certainly due to the insane story, but I couldn't even get more than an hour or so through the Mega Challenge map without starting to tire. The characters feel different enough, but when the strategy always narrows back into the slam move, the different movesets feel pointless. Part of the fun of many fighting games is the fact that you can think on the fly and use a variety of moves to take enemies down. Here, choosing a character only boils down to how fast you can get your slam. I'm sure that if you get four players together, the mayhem is entirely worth it, but with just two players, or even playing alone, the magic wears thin quickly. Even something as simple as adding multiple slam tiers to allow for a more dynamic path to victory, or only allowing one attempt per slam rather than four or five, would have improved the game insanely to me. The mechanics are sound, but the actual ideology behind the design is what hurts it the most here. I'm gonna give the game a silver bolt for its gameplay as a result of that. This game looks alright. I mean, some things like Donkey's fur texture look atrocious, but otherwise the game looks good for a GameCube game. The levels don't really blend together, although they could feel a bit more distinct. I feel like the lighting on most stages is either in the middle of the day or in the middle of the night. There's no in-between there. The character models look pretty good and pretty accurate, their motions are fluid, and the game feels like it actually had a budget, unlike the other three Shrektober games. Many characters have several different costumes based either on the story mode or just created at random, and they're usually pretty funny. Super Slam has a lot of charm, more so than I ever expected out of a licensed game like this. Even the voice performances are pretty solid. I mean, there are points where you can clearly tell they're not the film's voice cast, but they normally do a really good job of covering that up. Their delivery is good, and wait, is that James Arnold Taylor? Over my muscular and heavily lotioned dead body. That's definitely James Arnold Taylor doing the voice for Prince Charming. No matter where I go, it seems I always come back to Ratchet somehow. The music is surprisingly really good as well. A couple pieces are the more generic fight songs you'd expect to hear out of a game like this, but most come off really well and match the level they're from. There's a wide variety of instruments used and styles dabbled in. This song is just amazing. They took a single 30 second scene out of Shrek 2 and made an entire stage out of it with an accompanying commercial jingle. I don't even care, this game's getting a golden bolt for its presentation. This song right here made the entire month worth it. Super Slam's a good game, potentially a great one, but it's held back by a few questionable design choices. I don't think the intent was to make this anything more than a party game, but even the best party games have lasting power. The limited slam moves really hinder the lasting power that this game has, and it's a shame. But if the game clicks for you, there's a ton of content here. There's even a trophy room to show your accomplishments and check progress. However, if you require a fighting game to be more dynamic, perhaps this isn't for you. You can find the game online for around 10 to 15 bucks most times. If you're looking for something different to distract you, it can't hurt to pick it up. Perhaps you'll see something in it that I didn't. Either way, at least the first hour or two will be incredibly fun. Oh, thank god. Okay, so now that we're done with all these trash games, what's next in store? Bye, dude.